adversity not in the tournament or not later in the stages of an ACC conference schedule. The fact that they're able to come through and ha hold the mentality, as Alex said, resilient is what this program is, is at right now. And they've certainly toyed with some things tactically as Brian Penske's now getting more ingrained in his second season. And yet the results still keep coming, which makes Florida State maybe not an unfinished product as we've been alluding to. 7-0-1, haven't really put in a full 60 or 90 minutes yet. We'll see what they can do in these first 45 minutes against a Miami team that is extremely stingy and prides themselves on defense. Should be a lot of fun, my friends. Just moments away from first kick. Seminoles in the all gold. It is a gold out. Fans filing in should be a couple thousand in attendance. A lot wearing gold. Miami, green top screen bottoms. The Canes, an exhilarating win on Sunday. Uh, against a Louisville team that is better than their record indicates. It took till the final couple seconds when Reese Wheeler punched it in. And it's a Miami team that's riding high. Confidence resetting in ACC play. And, and Trevor, sometimes that could be all you need is just a, a clean slate and, and newfound momentum. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you have a 2 and one record in the ACC, I think that's something Miami, if you told them that at the beginning of the year to start the ACC play, I think you, they would take that uh, all day long for sure. And this is, is a program that is certainly a resilient bunch of as, as they are themselves and so they really pride themselves on defense and they will try and find ways to spring themselves to florida state's mistakes if they see any ey pretty good ball inside the six couple of canes skirmishing by flag goes up it crossed the end line and miami again getting win number three on the season the first time since 2018 that they've been 2-1 and one in the ACC. And Sarah Barnes, adversity has struck. They have a number of injuries. Two more key players out tonight. But she says, my team just keeps fighting. They could lay down and quit, but yet they don't. No, they, they are really right now hurting, as you mentioned. You know, a lot of injuries have stung this team. Katarina Molina in particular out right now. Gian, Gianna Angelillo, Zoe Lee, just uh, in pitting. Megan Morgan. I mean, so many players right now, unfortunately, are just out of action. So they're going to have to depend on their starting 11 and who they have available to really buckle down and, and hold strong, especially against this potent Florida State attack. But there's a lot of, you know, fight within this Miami team. And as we saw against Louisville, they fight to the bitter end. We asked Sarah Barnes, what's the plan against Florida State? She said, look, we got a lot of respect for them. We can't just sit back and take it, but we do have to shut down space when we have opportunities. If they turn the ball over, that's when we have to find ways to get into their attacking half. You see his Miami team again, 1-0 against Louisville. Two ACC wins, a thriller over Cuse a couple weeks back. Did get throttled by Clemson 5-0 last Thursday night. A, a Tigers team under Eddie Redwanski, who might be the dark horse in the ACC this season. Well, remember, I mean, against Florida State, Eddie Redwanski's team came out 2-0 against Florida State pretty early in that matchup before Florida State once again turned on the Jets and Royce put on the show what, what they're known for in second half performances. Star freshman Dudley, one-time pass from Molson. Echigini not able to get there. That's pretty good link-up play, though, from Florida State building out of the back. Joe Echigini, they call her Joe. Oni Echigini from London, England, Nigerian international. Her and the Nigerians were able to make the knockout round of the World Cup this summer, stunning everyone in the process. Nearly beat England in the round of 16. And what a boost of life she's given Florida State. Had to miss a couple of games early. Has moved her position a little bit towards the center. You saw her on the wings last year. Now more uh, attacking is more of an eight. And in that sequence and that threat, Ari, I think that's one of the keys for Florida State in this game. You know Miami is prone and known for being in the low block. They're going to have numbers back 11 with uh, 11 facing the ball. So if you can quickly transition as fast as you can without letting Miami set up, you might have those more pockets of space earlier and easier. And really trying to find, I think, for Florida State, if you are seeing Miami's low block, try and create more off-the-ball movement, design combinations, really start out wide. Typically, the wings and the outer flanks are probably more open. You might be able to try and do some passing link-ups there, try and draw Miami out a little bit more to have those pockets open up in the center. There's some space at the center for Edwards. Oh, poor giveaway. Here's Huff. Transfer from Tennessee. One of the best players in the SEC one season ago. Punches it out. Olsen turns left foot, let her down, but she's got a chance to retrieve. And time to operate. Olsen. 
hailing from Sweden, the senior, starting her career at the University of Florida. A lot of SEC flavor on this Florida State team. Joe Echeghini starting at Mississippi State. Huff, Claire Rains, who's out for the season from Tennessee. Not to mention Beata from Florida. So on and so forth. Makes sense, doesn't it? Brian Penske. He's bringing a much more high tempo pace here to the ACC, which is known for a little bit more moderate to slow play and build up. And it really has energized this conference. Speaking of Brian Penske, the only man to win ACC tournament in his first season at the helm. The only man to win the ACC and SEC Coach of the Year honors. A lot of questions were asked after Mark Kaporian resigns. What would the Knowles do? Who could they get? And they found a pretty good one. Yeah, and he's really settled in here into the second half, or the second full season for the Seminoles. You know, it was last year, you know, he really came on late. It was a late departure for Mark Kaporian for Florida State, and they needed to find someone fast who would be available. You know, you're into your off-season programs at this time when that happened, and so luckily the offer was kind of too good for Brian Penske to pass up after some time to think about it and some courting, of course, but it has turned out to be a wonderful situation for the Seminoles here, making it to the College Cup once again, and they certainly have aspirations this season as well. Three straight College Cups for Florida State. Doesn't get much better than that. Dudley, was that a bad ball? Trying to get to the keeper, Dajane. Mel Dajane able to clear it away. Now Miami enjoying some space on the turn. It's number nine on your screen, Tuska Mamakur. To the feet of Emma Tucker, graduate senior. Tucker on the left, Wen trying to get to her slides. Corner Miami, good moment. Bright spot for Sarah Barnes crew. This is what Miami's gonna have to do. They have got to find a way to get more opportunities and really don't play in your low block all day. You're not gonna win that way. You have to create more chances than normal. Florida State is going to push the pace traditionally now. They're not the old traditional power that they have been where they can build up through the back and find pockets of space and keeping it low. You have to stretch them out and get those transitional opportunities when you have them. That was a good one for the Canes. Freshman Emily McCartney. On the righty service, punched away by Roque. Chasing it down, Rogers will let it go out for a Canes throw. Smart play by Rogers, the junior from Vancouver. What hasn't already been said about Christina Roque? One of the best keepers in the NCAA each of the last three seasons. And Roque again switching and learning how to adjust to a system that puts more pressure on her. I think she's adjusted pretty well. Well, you can bet she's still highly motivated. And, you know, it was a little bit of a talking point this week, the fact that Florida State in their first three ACC games has allowed seven goals. And Roquet's been in net the entire way for the Seminoles, so you know she would definitely like to post up another clean sheet, several more clean sheets this year. So there's a lot of motivation in net for Roquet and the Seminoles to tighten up defensively. Directs towards the edge of the 18. Miami trying to get numbers forward. Rogers tussling. Cleared away by Wen. Up ahead. Now Florida State will counter press. Delaney Brown to McCartney. Some time for Miami to operate. Perhaps the Canes have enjoyed a little bit more of the ball than anybody thought early going. They're getting into their positions too. They're linking up with passes. They're not just waiting for the ball to come to them. They're pursuing it. They're down eight players right now due to injury. And the list continues to grow for Sarah Barnes' crew. Huff touching it forward, Olsen. Back to Huff. Soft first touch, Dudley. Dangerous freshman, dazzling, turning, firing across. It's loose, it was Olsen on the end of it. Bright moment, an energetic spark from Jordan Dudley. Good double team by Cerna and McCartney there on the back side. We take another look, good give and go here. Olsen feeding Huff and then outletting it over to Dudley, enters the box, good turnover to the right. 
And a little bit of a mistimed pass actually as Cerna and McCartney were behind Olsen. Just couldn't link that last bit up. Wayward touch back to Roque who had to chase the ball. Miami now positions Roque opts to go long. Oh, too much mustard. And Florida State offense that ranks sixth in goals per game in the NCAA. They have continued to find ways to put the ball in the back of the net. 24 of them on the year, averaging about three a contest. Now when had to do well there. Being chased down by Tucker and earns a throw. And the scary part is, you know, the longer the game goes, the stronger the Seminoles tend to be. 17 of those 24 goals are in the second half. And for Miami, it is really opportune for them to try and see if they can find a goal in the first half, to see if they can get a lead, some sort of momentum to at least put the Knolls on their heels and put that bug in their head of thinking about, wait a minute, we're in trouble here. We need to come back. Of course, for Florida State, they're used to right now this season of fighting through adversity and finding ways to get results. That's why they're 7-0-1. Oh, no doubt. And a bit of an extended break as well for both of these teams. Not playing since Sunday. You get that extra day instead of a Thursday tilt, you get Friday. Good for rest. But maybe some chemistry, some rhythm might be sacrificed in the process. See how this early momentum goes. Certainly Florida State the heavy favorite. You just look at the records and you feel that way, but it's a Miami team that is feeling invigorated, right, Trevor? I mean, they, they feel confident in rivalries. You just never know which way they might tilt. And they know they can have anybody score. I mean, they have seven different goal scorers this year. No one has a goal total over one. So they have players that when the opportunity presents itself, they can strike. Whether it's Mahmoud Poor up top, we saw Reese Wheeler, of course, for the Louisville goal. Lauren Meeks is right there as an attacking midfielder, number 21. Well, that's twice now Roque has tried to find EY and has struggled to get the ball. So Miami's tactics early, trying to put some pressure on Florida State. This is very encouraging if you're a Canes fan to see this because you, you're not scared of the moment. You're actually meeting Florida State in the middle and not letting them run up the field. Gilchrist on the clear. Took a deflection, Miami can retain. And now decision time for the side judge. It's a throw for Florida State. And I know the Canes are so used to playing 11, low block, you know, playing defensively, but that it could just, get, just gives you an extra spring in your step. When you're able to have more time with the ball, you're not reacting all the time and just tensing up and reacting and driving and, and pushing off the legs. You're able to work a little downhill with the ball. And they're doing a nice job here in the first opening 12 minutes and change of getting some quality possession time. Did you have this on your scorecard coming in on your keys? I, did this, I mentioned, you know, try and find, you know, opportunities where you can find them. I didn't see all this possession time with them, though. Big tackle play on Nesbitt. Calm and collected on the ball. Olsen playing a little bit deeper. One touch soccer from Florida State. Pretty good. And now EY pushing up ahead. I actually think Miami can play a little long ball offensively a little bit. That's how North Carolina got their third goal of the game against Florida State. Switching the point of attack, went heavy touch, able to recover the and a foul pulled. Seminoles will have a dangerous set piece opportunity. A little bit beyond the edge of the box. A little bit poor, lazy defense by Tucker. Could have done much better to make Sophia Wynn work. Now a golden opportunity for the girls in gold. See if they can cash in here. Yeah. Taylor Huff. Yeah, you have to think it'll be Huff taking it. Seven assists on the year. Leads the ACC. Second in the NCAA in assists per game. It is the lefty stroke of Huff towards that penalty spot. Met there by a Canes defender. Now EY took a knock. Looks to be okay. When, how about Pace transfer from Pitt? Oh, what a turn. Nesbitt inside the box, turning, sliding, and getting it out of there for the time being was Brown. Now Miami, Mamadpour. Up ahead, intercepted, Gilchrist. Quickly up ahead, Olsen, Olsen. Backs her defender, down pace. Over 60 games for the Panthers under Randy Waldrop, transferring to Florida State this season. Inserted into the lineup here this evening. 
39th of her career when you combine Pitt and Florida State, the Canadian. Had eight goals last season for Pitt, and they didn't have Amanda West, and they were searching for answers. Panthers got to that Sweet 16, pace a big part of it. And how ironic that her season ended here in Tallahassee in the third round of the NCAA tournament. It's like, maybe she thought, you know what, I like this team. Maybe I should, you know, my last year of eligibility, maybe I should come over here and see if I can win something with them. Yeah, weather was good. Grass was green. <laughs> Let's give it a rock. But she is a fantastic super sub traditionally, and this is only her second start of the season, but she's already come up in key moments and really eating time, too. She's really a great, she does a great job of pursuing the ball on defense. Ryan Penske really loves those moments deep into games, and you, know, we, you obviously see the highlights, see the goals, but the importance of killing off time and killing off games when you have a lead is super important as well, and Rhea Pace, hard to find someone better than her at doing that. Pretty good touch by Echigini inside the 18, spinning, creating space. Echigini, Pace, here she is, couldn't quite level it down to get a shot. Just a little too hard of a trap, couldn't control that hard shot of a pass by Hechigini. But here's the pace and here's the possession that Florida State's been seeking here. No pun intended, here is pace. Has it deflected. Edwards up ahead. Rogers can run, so can Wen. Throw in Canes. Rogers played 50 minutes the other night against Louisville in the win. Been a member of the Canadian Youth National Team. Has spent some time training with the Vancouver Whitecaps. A little bit north of 16 minutes in this game. Florida State, seven wins on the year, 2-0 and at home. Again, a Florida State team that hasn't played a whole lot of games here at the Seminole Soccer Complex. Six matches away from Tallahassee, just their third game front of a packed out crowd who has been chomping at the bit to see these Knowles play. Mahmoud Poor. Cleared Nesbeth tracking back from her sixth spot. Dudley, look at that touch. Into space, Dudley can really move. 1v1, here goes Dudley. Blow by Dudley, turning, firing, save, Dajane. Wow, she had to be great because Miss Jordan Dudley just put her on skates. A little turbo. Fantastic long ball by Nesbeth to feed Dudley, and Dudley just has so much talent, so well-rounded, and her downhill speed is great. Dribbling is amazing. Finds the space. It's all green grass over there on that left side, so it's easy for her to continue her track down, her, her run down the tracks. And gets a shot on Dajane. On the corner, towards the six, headed away. Turning. Echegini, back post, rising high. McCarty met it well. EY, now Huff creating space with dropping it back. Now Knowles enjoying some possessions. This is back to the days of old for Florida State. They basically cut off the field in half. Of course, this plays into Miami's playbook, of course, as well, their game plan. Playing the low block, pressure the opponent. EY Huff, edge of the 18, turning at Jagini. Had an ocean, just a little bit beyond her reach. Mahmoud Poor poked away pace. That's an amazing, that's an amazing job by Sophia Wynn right there, poking that one back up the flank. Now Nesbeth, Bermudan International. Edge of the 18, has a go, low, oh, dipping, diving, Dajane again, big save. Throw in Florida State, but now you see the Knoll growing into the match a little bit. Dajane showing off the stretch and the range that she can go to make a save. She's got 225 in her career for a reason, entering this match. 19 Brown, clearing. Mahmoud Poor looking for space. It's cleared away, McCartney. Now Flynn, graduate senior. 
out of Arlington, Virginia. Calm on the ball. The veteran on that back line for Florida State. Turns it up the field. Pace. Out wide wind, making a run from her right back spot. Ooh, blocked away. Trickling, and it will be a... It's a throw or a corner. Flag did go up for something. It looks like it will be a corner. Another one for Florida State. Be their second. Averaging about seven corners per game. Good for third in the ACC and scoring off two corners against Carolina. They have really toned that one in pretty nicely as of late. Pretty good ball towards the back post. Echagini met it. On the rise, though, instead of on the descent, and it pops over the net. Yeah, you've got two good targets there if you're Taylor Huff, Oni Echagini being one. And of course, Jordan Dudley, who scored the second goal against Carolina on Sunday. Jordan Dudley at 5'11", so no shortage of weapons that you could go for a header in for Florida State. Yeah, she's had two multi-goal games to this season. A game that you called against USF. Burst onto the national scene against Carolina. And really, she's just been building more and more with each passing game, Aria. Of course, the showcase with those goals against USF and North Carolina, but really strutting her stuff early in the season, the first two games of the year as well, Texas A&M, TCU. She can really just do it all. I mean, she's just, a, she's just one of those players that can do absolutely everything. Persistent on defense, great downhill speed. You leave her alone, and she's going to strike and have the accuracy to bury a ball right into the net. And such power on her shot as well. Can still go out and meet on the back side and just track down balls as well for passes. Great cutting ability. She's physical, tall, explosive cuts. I mean, this girl has just burst onto the scene, as you said, and she has such a bright future with Florida State. Entered this year in the class of 2023 as the number 14 overall recruit in top drawer soccer. Foul going the other way. Just north of 22 minutes. There's a freshman merging oh, and across TV sets everywhere in the United States. National audience on Sunday on ESPNU. And Dudley debuted well, at least in the Florida State Carolina rivalry that has turned into much of a Florida, uh, excuse me, an LSU Alabama football type of business rivalry. Every single year it's must watch TV and saw there the only true freshman is Dudley with the two multi goal games. And of course, she's been on the USU 20 CONCACAF team, so she's got the international experience. Just another player in Florida St State's arsenal, not just what they have currently, but going to the future. And there's the physicality by Dudley, not going to be denied. She wants the ball, and she wants to take advantage of it. Oh, what a ball, but the flag went up. This crowd's going to react. Flag went up, won't count. And again, there's a lot of gold all around that saw an absolute gorgeous pass from Dudley to Beata Olsen get erased. Take a look, pretty good angle right here. Look at that, just look at the physicality by Dudley. Just not in my house and you see Olsen just ahead and just maybe just a bit too fast, timed it up maybe just a tick too late or a tick too early. She's building a following, a fan club. How can you not love what Jordan Dudley has done so far this season? Five goals on the year. TopDrawerSucker.com, who covers the game as well as anybody. Expected her to be pretty good. Had her on that freshman best 11. Expected her to be one of the best 11 freshmen in the country. She's delivered, man. I mean, it's been incredible. She admitted she's been trying to get comfortable as a freshman. All the different levels from non-conference play via high school. And then that jump that comes from non-conference to ACC is a different animal. Yeah, she was playing a little out of position so far this season, too. She's out as an attacking wing. She's more 
prone to being in the center. And she's getting this opportunity. Now that Florida State's more into a 4-4-2, she can be alongside Beata Olsen a little bit, so she can be a little more centrally located on the regular here. Of course, you're going to move all over the place, but that's a little bit more of a natural fit. But there's nothing that she hasn't really done this year that hasn't been short of and very impressive. Florida State and Miami meeting yet again. Seminoles lead that series all time, 18 to four. And speaking of players who stood out against Carolina, Mimi Van Zanten has checked into the game. Big goal right at the end against the heels. Salvages the draw. She's in for EY. And Van Zanten out of Kildare, Illinois. Five foot five, Sister Kiki, stars for Notre Dame. So two Van Zantens, oh that's pretty. From when Discipline. pace turning. Discipline touch right there. Not panicking under pressure, knows there's space right behind the attacking defender. And Gini turning, end line, cutting it back. It'll be a corner. Not bad from Joe. So hard to get so deep against this Miami defense. They really try and make you force their way into the middle where they can really clog things up. If you can find ways to get behind them. That is really a good secret sauce, good formula to really feed into. Huff in swinging ball off the back of a cane. So Huff will try to the other side and make herself at home at the corner flag and do it again. It's 10 Edwards, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. 47th game in a Canes jersey. One of the three who wears the captain's armbands for the Canes. Really is a force there in the middle on the defensive side as a holding mid. When she wants to, when they can get an attacking run, she can really fly up the middle herself. Good all-around player. Another good ball near post this time. Olsen nods it back to Huff. And now Huff turning, cutting inside the edge of the 18, now near post again. Another deflection. Is that another corner? You better believe it. It'll be corner number five for Florida State. How good Florida State's been on corners. They will play this game all day long. And this is where the pressure, where you see Sarah Barnes looking on, hoping that her team can clear one out. Give herself a little bit more breathing room. Seminoles average seven corner kicks a game, nearing that number now. The ball is down. It's Olsen who got a head on it. It'll be a goal kick, Miami. Like just a little too square head right here for Olsen. Yeah, just she goes right back down the line. Got to be able to turn your body as much as you can towards the net. Just too horizontal. So Maggie Titano into the match for Florida State. As is Maria Alagoa. Went pretty good ball, Alago, Portuguese international. Wants to have a go, put some cut on it. Started slicing away. Alago, who missed the last game against Carolina. International duty. She's back in there. Alago, Alago with a ton of talent. Just needed that ball to settle a little bit. She has certainly had some moments from long distance here on this pitch before, so she's itching to find another way to get a goal. See, Olivia Garcia has also checked into the match. Still nil-nil. Miami has played well, disciplined, organized. Florida State, though, starting to put the pressure on this Canes back line. Nesbeth on the turn. Cut off and a throw for Florida State. 
It's so important, though, for Miami, to, at least at the very early stages of this first half, to get some quality time with the ball. It's going to lessen the burden on their legs if they have to play this style for the remainder of the game or for much of the remainder of the game. So if they can find more opportunities with the ball, play a little keep away here and build a little bit more, it'll help them with their stamina. McCartney, the freshman from McKinney, has been thrust there in the center back role. Huff, now Nesbeth. Looking to switch the point of attack. One. Now the Knowles again will build. Plenty of time on the ball. Seminole team dominant at home. Especially in ACC play in the regular season. 43 straight wins against non-ranked opponents. And at home you see it a 90% hit rate since 2005. And in that same time span, Aria, against ACC opponents, it's an 84.2% clip in terms of a succession rate for them to come away victorious. Overall, 74-11-7 against ACC opponents here at the complex. Not bad. It makes it complex for these opponents. Felton looking for support. Mahmudpour turning, looking for help. Needs a teammate, clips it up ahead. Roque has to hurry, gets there. It's going to take individual efforts like that for Miami. Mamupour right there. Nice job dribbling, cutting. There's that <laughs> There's that number, the last loss, ironically enough, against the Canes. And that was the year Florida State won a national championship. On the road, that was one of those games where Miami dragged out as long as they could. They held their own. Florida State dominated possession, dominated the shots. But all it took was one opportunity in the end, and they cashed in big time for a walk-off win in extra time. Miami gave Florida State a scare last season. A 1-0 win for FSU, just 10 shots combined in that game in Coral Gables. There's a foul. Pace against Tucker. Good sportsmanship back up there. So, look, it's a heated rivalry, but there's still respect to be given out for how hard these two teams work. But you know when, they, when you get two rivals against each other, you know they're going to come in with their best shot. Both are highly motivated on that aspect alone. But where Miami is right now with the 2-1 conference record, you know, they understand there's an opportunity here. I mean, look at their next couple games as well. They're going not just on the road here. They're going on the road to North Carolina. They're going on the road to Notre Dame. They're eventually going to have to go on the road to Virginia. They're going to have, they're going through the murderer's row of the ACC. They know they have to step it up and come to play every chance they get. Look at how many road games they've got coming up. This league's as deep as it's been. Only going to get better next season with the addition to Stanford, Cal, and SMU. Huff, deep lying mid, trying to play it forward to pace. Great disruption by Cerna to at least help her team get numbers back and in position for a throw in. Check that, that's Zan. Zan. There's a good sign, Jody Brown into the match as well, as well as Lily Farkas. And Kaylin Zippay. So the two Knowles who missed time last week with their international teams back in there. Seminoles got a draw against Carolina without Jody Brown. And that is as impressive as a feat. You're talking about one of the best players in the country. Shout out to her native Jamaica for making out of the group stage of the World Cup as well. Van Zandt. Crossing it in another corner for Florida State. Cerna took that one straight on the button. But yeah, that's a great point, Aria, how Jody Brown has only played in five of the eight matches for Florida State, and yet they're still undefeated. They're still coming away with results. The fact that she didn't have a minute, obviously, on international duty from Jamaica, yet still coming away with a point on the road against the number one team in the country. Think what might have been if they did have Jody on there. Now she's here now. No better time. Meet of the ACC schedule. Nesbeth looking for that back post with some loft. Knotted down. Edge of the 18. Van Zandt. Brown. 
First touches of the match for Jody. Alagoa turning, called, had support and help in Brown. North of 34 minutes, no goal so far. And a Miami team that has been tough this season, giving up just 12 goals. Part of their identity to try and close down space. They've been brave, battling numerous injuries. Now an FSU team that continues to get better as the season progresses. Still undefeated is Florida State. Sarah Barnes pleading her case, not going to get what she likes. Here is Peyton Norse. Dudley going to take a seat. The 35-minute mark. Into the 36th minute. It's a couple only, of freshmen. Only Leilani Nesbeth is the one who hasn't been subbed in yet for Florida State. So Brian Penske really emptying the bench here against the Canes. He's got Jody Brown right now as a, a, right, a right back on the back line. So he's really tinkering with a few things here in this lineup. Jody's done that for the Jamaican national team. Has played some right back. Mentioned the connections that always go through the ACC. We mentioned uh, Mimi Van Zanten, sister Kiki, who plays at Notre Dame. Also on the Jamaican national team with Jody. And so Mimi, as she continues to develop through that system, you could see Jody Brown and Van Zanten teaming up on the international stage too. Bad giveaway. Miami, oh, not able to save it. That's tough. Tucker, boy, if she could have just kept it in, had a chance to put something dangerous on goal. Well, I think there's a little bit of inexperience right there showing for Florida State. Brown with the hard touch. Taitano couldn't control it, working her way back. But those are the opportunities right there. You are handed a gift right there deep into Florida State's back third, and Tucker just could not stay with it. Trying to wait for maybe a, an opposing player to really find the lane that she wanted. But, well, you got to make sure you are sure-footed and maintain possession for an opportunity like that. Rarely do you see Florida State make a mistake that deep behind in their own half. See how the Seminoles adjust. Trevor usually asks you this in the second half, and I will. But right now, what kind of adjustments do you think Florida State needs to make? And what do you like about Miami's game plan? Well, I like what Miami did, obviously, in the first five, ten minutes of the match. You know, you won possession. You played a little bit high. Then you settle back into what you're known for, and I think they can continue to do that. But moments like that that we just saw with Tucker, you have got to cash in on. You must attack with full force real quick because you need numbers to make that happen to create a goal-scoring opportunity. As far as Florida State goes, they're really doing a nice job of getting time and working their way up. Pretty good dipping ball. A nice shot by Farkas, and she's rewarded with a corner. So just continue to press like Florida State's doing. And look, I... I don't really know if I have enough advice to really give Florida State. I mean, they've, they've done a pretty good job on their own when they come out in the second half. They just turn it on to another level here this season and last season as well. Brian Penske mentioned the Syracuse game is one that kind of played similar, at least early on. Florida State trying to figure out how to get the ball in the net despite peppering the net. Loose ball inside the six, now edge of the box and out four. A seminal throw. I think Miami's also done a nice job positioning on these corners as well. Florida State really hasn't had too many dangerous results here off these corners. So if they can mark and continue to do what they're doing to make Florida State a little bit agitated where they're not getting a clear head and shot on the goal, you know, they'll take that for sure and run with it. Florida State 24 goals on the year, giving up just nine. And really, I just given up two until the last, uh, the last three game stretch there, Trevor. Three against Carolina, two against Clemson, two against Cuse. Although the Cuse game, interesting in the way that that played out. A lot of mistakes by the Knowles led to the goals. Pretty good run, though. Tucker. Here into the Seminole half. Big Tucker. Got a, got a steam. Yeah, a steam, but no support. Yeah, I mean, she took it herself and really outran the rest of her teammates. But, and then we heard from Leilani Nesbitt this week on the 
point you just made, Ari, with how many goals that have been scored against Florida State, to really just boil it down to a communication issue. When they went back and they watched the tape, they really just understood this is something we can correct on our own. It's nothing against, you know, other opponents or something we did maybe, you know, tactically wrong. We just need to short things up in our communication and get to the spots where we need to. A couple of things were luck, obviously, as you mentioned, the Syracuse game. Maybe a couple mistakes that if they just played a little bit better against Carolina, maybe a couple of those goals don't happen. As Lauren Flint had a chance to clear the ball, that one went back the other way for the first goal. Gilchrist was in a pretty good position for that second goal against Carolina, went off her knee, it just kissed the post and went in. So just a couple of slight little tweaks and I think they might be just fine. Silky touch from Brown to keep it in. And you know, when you consider the two of their three opponents, teams in the top 10, Clemson and North Carolina. You know you're going to get some pretty potent offenses that you're facing at the same time. It's a seminal team that also is the only team in the country that has two top 10 road results right now and two top three top 10 results, two victories when you mentioned what they did at Clemson and at TCU. And then that result against Carolina. Nobody else in the country right now has the resume that Florida State does. They're ranked second. Uh, but that, again, Seems like almost end of every season, FSU finds a way to end number one. At, at least make a push and make a conversation about it. At the bare minimum, get a number one seed in the tournament. I mean, do they do that not that they, you know, depend on a resume to get that because they're obviously such a great program. It obviously helps, though, when you're making your case to be a number one if you're not the number one overall team in the country. And of course, when it comes to tournament time, obviously, you know, if you win the ACC tournament, that's almost a guaranteed number one seed without Deadly and how dominant this, the ACC has been over the years. Seminoles have won it four of the last five seasons, three in a row. And you're talking about giants like Carolina, Duke, Notre Dame, Virginia. The usuals are still there. We'll see how Pitt looks this season. Randy Waldrum seems to have himself a really good group experienced. Clemson has been pushing into that upper echelon. It'll be a fun year. And look, if this Miami team continues to grow with playing some freshmen that are getting some opportunities, I mean, you never know where it's going to take them. Yes. Just got to continue to build. I mean, this is the start that they want, though, in terms of the conference, you know, two and one. And as we mentioned, they're just a one result behind FSU in the standings. That's right. Only a point behind. Farkas and line. No. Oh. Van Zandt couldn't quite get there. She does have speed to kill. And Mimi Van Zandt's a name you're going to know uh, across America, certainly across Florida State fans in their living rooms. Very highly recruited. She's been overshadowed a touch by what Dudley has done. But they really like what she can do. Claire Rains goes down, right, with the injury and hurts her knee first game of the season 10 minutes in. And they had to throw Mimi Van Zandt in there. And she has responded well. Nesbeth touched away. Well, they didn't know her before. They certainly knew her by the end of last weekend after that goal. How crazy is it that, you know, both of these teams scored with two seconds left to get results, both coming from true freshmen to collect their first career goals. Absolute symmetry in terms of those finals, with the exception of Miami getting the win, Florida State getting the tie. Poked away from Brown. Tucker cutting it back inside. Garcia tried to race across the body. Ball forward, Llewellyn. Flynn looking for clearance. Brown, nice touch, Nesbeth. Great heads up pass. Oh, Nesbeth got a little bit lucky. Alagoa has numbers and is pressing forward. That's a great jump by Alagoa. But Miami is really sharp right now, Ari. They're just getting in the way of where Florida State wants to take the ball a bit. Farkas, Michigan transfer. Played on this very field a couple seasons back in the Elite Eight. <laughs> yeah, Jalen Howard, Gabby Carl, just like dashed Leah, to their hopes. Just like Leah Pace, where her season ended last year on this pitch. It's not a, a bad season, strategy. A couple seasons ago, Farkas' season came to an end here. Struggle to beat him, join him. What a, game, what a game that was against Michigan. That was an unbelievable game. Had to go to OT. Extra time, no score. One minute, one minute remaining in the half. Now under a minute to go. Still nil-nil. 
Not sure if we had this in the plan going forward. Not sure if we thought this would be the case in pregame, but Miami's hanging on. Much in the same way last season, where the Canes stifled FSU. A Heather Payne penalty kick, though, was the difference. And it certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. I mean, not just the fact that Miami's so good defensively, but you look at, we talked about how much Florida State dominates second halves. First halves, it's pretty much even Steven. The goal differential is only by a plus one. They've scored seven goals, they've allowed six. Florida State sometimes can get off to slow starts here. Just really depends on the locker room speeches and the adjustments for those 15 minutes in the locker rooms to change the direction and trajectory of this game. Last ball of the first half. It will clear the 18. Nil nil. After one, Trevor. Both teams fighting. Miami playing really well. This is what Miami wants to see. You have a shot. Open up pockets of space. You can find the spaces initially, but Miami does a nice job of closing it off when they absolutely have to. That's why they've only allowed 12 goals. And keep in mind, five of those goals were against one team, and that was Clemson. In the other games that they play, they've only allowed seven total. So they do an amazing job in whole teams and just try and shut them out as much as they can. And they hope Florida State ends up with the same number that Dajane has on her jersey, which is, which is a zero at the end of the night. percent possession by Florida State. Olsen. Seminoles trying to get some early momentum and flow in this second half. Here's a throw. We heard from Brian Penske. Sarah Barnes, no doubt, making adjustments herself. Down back to Alex. Guys, head coach Sarah Barnes, not a surprise, said we kept the third-ranked team in the country to zero, so we're happy with that. We applied pressure when we needed to. But on offense, she said we need to make quicker decisions. We need to have better quality passes and hopefully get one in the back of the net. Thank you, Alex. No doubt about it. And Miami, it'll be an interesting dilemma, right, so to speak. How much do you send numbers into the attack to try and find a result versus how do you try and keep that defensive shape because it has been working? Do you keep it close and hope for something to go your way rather than being proactive and trying to create something? Uh, that's going to be the question, I think, for Miami, especially if they can keep FSU at no goals. Obviously, if Florida State scores, game plan changes a little bit. Oh, yeah, no question about it. I mean, you have to... If they see some, uh, even a slimmer of an opportunity, I think you have to go full bore and commit completely on the attack in that moment. Obviously, if it's 11 on offense, 11 on defense when you have it. That's the mentality Florida State has. That's why they've been so successful. They're committed when they have the ball. They're committed when they don't have the ball to get it right back. Miami has to come with that same tenacity and aggressive mindset to really force the issue and scare Florida State's back line. 40% possession for Miami. A little bit more than I think the experts would have had coming into the match. And I think that's a testament to the high press a little bit of how much they sported that. You're not going to be able to really have the ball if you just sit back so much in the low block, make it a half, a half pitch kind of a contest. Florida State traditionally has been used to that. They are forcing the issue, and they do like to move the ball forward and more direct nowadays. It's a good mix that uh, Brian Penske's have, but when you're more direct and you go through the center, that's kind of where Miami lives. Almost like a hornet's nest over there. They will make you pay if, and, not, and make it really frustrating for you to find a way to the Honeywell. Let's not forget Miami has some experience playing some big time teams. They snapped Bama's 22 game home winning streak, a nil nil result. That's a really good Alabama team that made the College Cup a season ago. In fact, they beat Alabama last year. That team went to the College Cup. I mean, they, I mean, you know, Coach Barnes has had some really big signature wins here for this program. I know they've been really difficult to find in this tough ACC, but I mean, back in 2021, they beat Florida for the first time since 2012. They beat Clemson, number 15th ranked at the time in 2019. And don't forget, against Florida State in 2018, last time Florida State's fell to an unranked opponent. They have a way of 
making some magic and Cinderella stories happen. EY trying to create space, able to create that angle. Miami though, again, on it. Rogers, what a turn that was. And forces the throw in. It'll be a throw for Miami. Alex, what you got? Guys, you can already see Florida State starting to apply more pressure, and it's because Brian Pensky tells his players, take what the moment gives you. You don't have to wait. You don't have to play possession. No, he wants you to go for the goal, and I'm sure and I'm sure going inside in that halftime, he definitely talked to them about that message. Take what the moment gives you and play free. I thought it was as open and as candid. Brian talking to Alex at, at halftime, saying that's as slow as a half as we've had. Disappointing. You don't hear coaches often say that after 45 minutes. But the way Florida State played against Carolina, you know, it makes sense. You come out, maybe you let your guard down just a tad bit. And maybe the energy needs to pick up in the second half. Ooh, high kick. And right to the face of Mamutpour. That was really dangerous. The play continues. He simply said it was not good enough. Let's see, here's a charge, though, for the Seminoles. Huff, oh, too big of a charge. Falls to the feet of Brown. Brown, outside. Here's Wen. Has an angle. Chips it back towards the six. Headed away. And Miami back towards dangerous areas. Oh, I don't think that's what you wanted to see if you were a Canes fan. But Dajene, as she has been for much of the season, Right in spot. That's the kind of forward momentum that Florida State's been really building to perfection this year in a lot of instances. They found some open space, caught Miami in the middle of the field right there, didn't have all 11 behind it. And you have to pounce. That's exactly what Brian Penske has said in terms of, you know, what Alex was mentioning, how just let the, you know, Meet the moment. Let, let the moment present itself to you and go and take advantage of it. Sometimes that is playing and building from the back. But other times it is charging through the middle and taking advantage or going over the top diagonal balls. Dodging it again. It's a much more aggressive attitude to this Florida State program that has still created the dominance that they have in a much different way as we've been accustomed to seeing traditionally over the years here in Tallahassee. I love that, uh, talking to him earlier this week and again tonight in pregame. Uh, he said, look, uh, we want opportunities to possess when we can. Dictate what the game gives you. If it doesn't give you possession, don't wink passes. Have a killer, ruthless instinct and get forward. Let's get numbers and waves and, and attack quickly. You've seen that from Florida State. I mean, there have been moments, a uh, Jordan Dudley against Carolina, right? Receives the ball and knows exactly what to do. Again tonight on a turnover, Dudley just burning by the Canes back line. Big save by Dajene on it. But you can kind of see Brian Penske putting his touches, like you said, on this program. And even when they're not exactly clicking on all cil cylinders, Ari, when they have had moments of adversity, he's, he sees that they're developing an identity to, to counteract that. He mentioned to us this week, it's maturity, toughness, and staying calm in the challenging moments. And that they've proven that they can work through their issues that they are seeing in real time during the game and yet coming out on top when it matters most. So there's a, still a comfort level. It's not a panic mode or a panic mindset yet. Now, many people look at, you know, on the surface here in Florida State still tied with Miami. It's not kind of, you know, we've seen historically Miami give Florida State a bit of trouble. Dudley taken down. Edge of the 18. Now decision time as well. Will there be a card? That was Salas on the defense. He's going to stay out of the book for the time being. Head official, Kayla Polonski. Fairly fortunate, although she is getting, she is falling to the ground. I think that's the one thing that saves Salas is the fact that she is on her way to the grass. If she still has her feet underneath her and she's hulking, then I think she might get the yellow card. But it's still a golden chance for Florida State this deep just outside the 18. Good chance for Florida State. Huff to the back post. Ooh, skimming by that upper left 90. Miami able to take a sigh of relief. Yeah, Huff hasn't scored since the opening weekend. She's, she was going for goal right there, far side. Since, that, since those two goals in the first two contests, seven assists. 
leading the ACC. And Huff, first week in the ACC, Trevor, Offensive Player of the Week. Introduce yourself kindly, huh? This ball going out for a seminal throw in. One of the impact transfers in all of college soccer. All conference in the SEC. Certainly going to be all conference in the ACC this season as well. Yeah, she's just such a dynamic force in the middle. It's taking over in what Florida State was looking to see if they can find some athletes with the departures of Claire Robbins and Jenna Nicewanger. They found gold in Taylor Huff. And you can see the service that she provides setting up her teammates is flawless. Junior from Mansfield, Ohio. Picking Florida State with the comfort she had with Brian Penske. Came over with teammate Claire Reigns. Reigns, of course, being lost for the season. And so a lot to learn for Lauren Huff, for Taylor Huff, excuse me. For more on her, we go back to Alex. On her and Beata Olson. Beata told me that the addition of Taylor Huff has been such a relief, losing Jenna Nicewanger last season and thinking you might not be able to find an athlete like that again, but then Taylor Huff comes in. She brings athleticism, she brings energy, and she's just been a fantastic addition to this Florida State team. Energy, the key word there, Alex. And you lose Clara Robbins, right? And Jenna Nicewanger. That's not easy to replace. I mean, that's, I don't care who you are. You're not just replacing multinational championship caliber players, both who can now play professionally. But they, the Seminoles have found a way. I mean, they have moved Taylor Huff in again. That's the, probably one of the top five impact transfers in college soccer this season. Then you move Echigini from her space out wide in the attack and more in a central position. But then you know what Brian Penske said? He said, look, Jordan Dudley made that decision easy on us too. As we're okay, nearly spilt it. And able to lock on. But again, this season continues to evolve, right? It progresses. Now, Brian Penske has to like what he has. Oh, there is no any question. I don't think he'd trade any roster on in the entire country for what he has right here. There is skill, athleticism, tenacity, and a will to win. That's the standard here at Florida State, and that does not die easy. That is continued, and it's through not just how skilled these athletes are, but the leadership qualities that they all present starts obviously at a young age you know in high school they're all very successful players on the high school level and it builds from there dudley trying to find space turning it off the post nearly the opener now nesbitt she'll have a go dajane incredible oh my goodness leilani desbeth hit a shot that had a date with the back of the net, and Dajanay blocked. Here's some success on the offensive side for Florida State. Banger off the post. Then it's teed up. Nesbitt to her right, takes the shot. Nice little fadeaway, but Dajanay, sharp as can be, keeps it a nil-nil game. Low lining ball, goal kick Miami. So they're out of the woods. Dajanay, who has been one of the leaders of this Miami team, certainly showing well again tonight. Alex, what you got? Fifth year player is also fifth all time in saves for Miami. She said she's played Florida State a lot in her career, but she has not won yet. Now this is her last season of college soccer. She knows this could be her last opportunity and she was ready to come out there, get action in the goal and make her team proud. So far so good. Dajanay, incredible Miami dodging bullets. <laughs> She's been a brick wall I tonight. That. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate I that. see what you're doing there. I appreciate Funny that. Funny wordplay. I got that. you. Yeah. Of course, man. I, res back. I respect. You know, we're, we're both guys that, you know, capitalize on those moments for sure. I, I knew I missed being in this booth. With you. <laughs> it's been a while. It has, it has been, been a while. while. Pleasure to be back here. But this is just a firecracker from Nesbeth, and she along with many of other of her teammates, can certainly fire from distance. And that is really beautiful. It's one of the saves of the year. It's got to be. Seen a lot of good ones so far this season throughout the ACC, and that's as good as it gets. All six foot one of Dajane coming to good use right there. She talked to Alex about becoming a better leader, the growth of this team. 
maneuvering the youngsters. Nice piece of play by Nesbitt. How about Nesbitt's work rate getting all the way back there for her team on defense? Yeah, definitely perhaps the most stamina on this team. Keep in mind, she's she came, she's obviously been here all of her collegiate career at Florida State. Didn't start out in that holding midfield position. She was kind of an attacking mid, but kind of was behind other starters early on in her career. And then after the departure of Jalen Howell, that spot opened up, and she's been used to playing in that spot against that spot in the holding midfield. And she's really done a nice job. Dudley one on two, has support on the left. It's Dudley! Who else? Take a bow and tip of the cap to the star freshman who continues to dazzle in Tallahassee. Brian Penske calls her the silent killer, but boy, does she make a lot of noise after she delivers the goods. Do not let her get space. She gets ahead of steam, and she puts a ton of power into her shot. Beautifully done. Low, far post. Could not be better done and well executed by Jordan Dudley. Brian Penske said Jordan Dudley is a silent killer of sorts. I tell you what, that kill shot was loud. Ripped the back of the net. Dudley leaves no mistake. There is nothing Dodge A could do there, and Florida State, it had been coming. They had been getting closer and closer. They have the opener in front of a raucous crowd here tonight. And once again, second half goals. There is no team better in second halves, to my, in my estimation, than Florida State. Not enough. No doubt, now 18 to three on the year in that number. Here's Dudley, feeling good. On to her right, will she have a go? Crowd standing up. Echagini Brown, Jody Brown left foot, Jody Brown blocked. Like a boa constrictor right now, Florida State slowly trying to squeeze the life out of Miami. Well, now Miami's got a stretch and like they have to get a little bit more of a high press now because they know they have to turn things around. And Florida State took advantage of that with some long ball play. That's the formula to break down Miami's defense. Here's Huff. Now you see the pep at the step of Florida State. Right, it takes a step forward, doesn't it? A notch gone up. And that's what Dudley provides, energy, a spark. This home crowd behind him, Florida State now looking strong. It really takes a team like the, like the, like the, for, the formidable ooh, close to also, skill of North Carolina to really you know, challenge them and break their momentum. Huff, back post, headed away, off the six, into the air. Kane's not out of the woods yet. Florida State, a gold out tonight. Have taken the lead thanks to Jordan Dudley now looking for a second. When onto her left, slow trickling ball, firing low, Dajane diving to her right. Mel Dajane has put on a show herself. Boy, she reacted a little late to that too. I don't think she saw that ball being kicked by Huff. See, she has a blocker in front. McCartney was right there trying to mark Huff, trying to get in front of it. Dajne, though, has enough wherewithal, seeing that ball coming in hot to make the save down to her right. But it really just takes a lot of other skilled players on the opponent's side to really disrupt the flow of Florida State once they get going, Aria. And I'm, that's going to be the challenge here now for Miami. Do they have somebody that can really spring, and if they get a ball, just kick it down the other way, the length of the field as far as you can, and let someone go and chase. And as Van Zanten comes in for EY, Dajane, six saves tonight, matches the number she had against Louisville. She has had some outstanding efforts. And Florida State continuing to push forward. 25th goal as a team. Ryan Penske told us we get better as the game goes along for whatever reason. We do want faster starts. We've got to play better in those opening 45s. But something after that locker room break comes alive in these knolls. And something about adversity comes to life with these knolls, right? It brings that extra gear. And we've seen it all season long, especially the last three. Clemson, two goals up. Florida State, four unanswered. 
Syracuse goes up twice on Florida State. Knowles composed, collected. Not many teams play well at Carolina, and then they fold when they fall behind, but not Florida State. They have continued to be resilient. The word Brian Penske used with Alex earlier. Van Zanten, Knowles looking for a second. Across the middle, staying on her feet. Good pass. Oh, Dajene again. How did that stay out of the net? If you have an answer, tell me. Intelligence. That's my answer, Aria. Dajene knows where that ball is going. Great movement, though, with the ball. Olsen, good turning by Echigini, although I think she may have took a little bit too much time, but she had to obviously control it, set her feet. Dajene, though, great positioning, understanding the flow of where the ball is going. Excellent save. And Sarah Barnes' team is going to continue to fight. It's a resilient group as well, taking again the word from Brian. I mean, Sarah's squad is, I mean, they're tough. You have eight injuries, two more tonight. Katarina Molina had the game-winning assists on Sunday, not playing tonight. Gianna Angelillo has been the best freshman on the field for Miami this season. She's not available tonight. And then you talk about multiple players that they were counting on, and it's it's been tough. And you, you ask Sarah Barnes, and she'll, she does a, a deep sigh of breath first, right? She takes a deep breath and goes, well, anytime a coach starts with well, you know that they're about to start PR controlling, right? It's, 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 it's almost we're like we're gonna do my best. It's almost like saying anything before the word but. Yeah. It's just like nothing matters before what you just said. Completely. Give them credit though. Two ACC wins for Miami matches what they had all of last season. Well, considering this too, Aria, they haven't had three wins in the ACC since 2018. Man. Can you imagine if I mean just getting just understanding where the building blocks are? You have to lay a foundation down with them getting more freshmen. Uh, more playing time for freshmen, that'll help the building blocks for this program, for sure. Helps them get more skill, lets them see the speed and the pace of this game, this level of play. And Sarah Barnes is no stranger. It's a strong play, Dudley across. Boy, she turns fast, Just, doesn't did she? Did you see the speed on Dudley there on that turn? It's acceleration, speed, clinical skill, ruthless finishing. Dudley's the complete package. I mean, it's crazy. The Seminoles have had some great players and some great freshmen throughout the school's history. And Dudley might be among the best. It's still early in her career. It's hard, right? When you look at the list of Knowles greats, Dudley's got the potential and the ingredients to be another one. That's a really good ball. Dodge A asked questions, had answers. Oh, that ball goes out. And Seminoles leading 1-0. And some subs coming. We will bring back Alex for more on Florida State Star Freshman. Absolutely, guys. Jordan Dudley, an, a phenomenon. But Taylor Huff said a lot of players in college have speed, but nobody has the speed and technical skill that she has. And to be able to execute at such a level as a freshman makes it all the more impressive for her. I mean, we're impressed, right, Trevor? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Man. This is my first live look at Dudley this season in the ACC. She's wonderful. And there have been some, there's some great freshmen in the league right now. You look at Pitt, they've got some really good players. Uh, Deborah Abiodun, who hard foul going the other way. Van Zanten, just want to let you know her presence is being felt. She's here. You look at Carolina, they've got multiple really good freshmen coming off the bench right now. You talk about a leader in the clubhouse for ACC Freshman of the Year. Rookie of the year, that's Jordan Dudley. And picked Florida State over Clemson late. I asked her straight up, I said, hey, so was it Mark Krikorian who recruited you? She said, yep, initially I wanted to play for Mark, but we felt like as a family, Florida State would be in good hands under Brian Penske. She was right about that. She said, I felt like I could make an impact in Tallahassee. Uh, you can check that box as well. Absolutely true. Burst onto the scene. You saw it early in the season, too. Even though she wasn't getting goals, she saw and showcased toughness. That'll get you on the playing field a lot. Jody Brown, nifty footwork. A couple of Olays just spring out at the Seminole Soccer Complex. And really, Dudley, you know, had to really be physical, you know, going on the road against Texas A&M. On the road at number nine TCU at the time. And she really worked hard getting time in, that, in those lineups. 
Nice touch by Wen. Pretty good ball towards the box. Hoff coming across. Cut it across the face of net. Goal kick. Sub stomach. I saw Taylor Shaw already enter the match for Miami. That's 22. Now Jordan Felton back in. The junior from Waldorf, Maryland. Edwards takes a seat. And Jody Brown again working back from being with her national team. Yeah, starting off the second half more into that attacking mindset into the midfield. Just got to catch her legs a little bit there in the first half, playing on the back line a bit. Of course, something she's used to with Jamaica. And again, it's the amazing thing how you, Florida State still technically speaking, when you have players on international duty, you're not fully available. And this is a team that's thin. They're not used to having a lot of depth on their roster. And it's really only because with who gets to come here, you're probably going to play. Because there's so much talent on this roster and with Florida State and the program that you really want to be here, you want to know you're going to have a chance to play. Only 19 Seminoles have suited up tonight. It's quality numbers, though, for Florida State. Small roster, everybody's pretty good. Quality, not quantity. Ooh, Bacigini. That had been one for the highlight reel. It drifts wide. Florida State doing a much better job of crossing the ball laterally and finding headers into the box. This might be an aspect I think Florida State's going to take advantage of perhaps through ACC play. They certainly have some height here. Echeguini at 5'8", Dudley at 5'11". Taylor Huff's at 5'8", too. I know she's probably more going to be taking those corners and those set pieces, but She's got some height, too. Saw her have an opportunity for a header in the middle of the box. Orrin Flynn's been known to be a presence there as well on set pieces coming up from the back line. So there's certainly chances for Florida State to really go up into the air a little bit more to add to that aspect of the game. Pretty good connection from Nesbeth and Huff. Miami spoils in the 26th minute. And right there, I mean, that's, there's an example right there for Miami. You know, you get possession of the ball. I know you're kind of cornered in a little bit, but you have to find a way to keep the ball in play. You're just giving, it's basically, a, it's just a guarantee to give Florida State the ball back, and maybe you're thinking, okay, well, we'll reset things. Maybe we can get a quick turnover, but you know, your time with the ball is so few and far between right now. You did a good job in that first half getting about 40% in possession. Now we're seeing the Florida State of old here now. You get that one goal lead, Seminoles will just tend to build from the back again, which is their bread and butter over the course of the last decade plus. Ron EY back in for Florida State. Want to check that, yep. Sophia Wend went down to the bench. On the turn, pace. EY. Now EY again has a hit. Whoa, Ooh, whistles just wide of Dajane. The Seminoles leading 1 0 after that shot. Back to Alex for Florida State's. Guys, you've Super seen power. Florida State's offensive production pick up here in this second half, and that's because they're transitioning quicker. They're pr executing wing pressure. Head assistant coach Aaron Bruner says that he calls that their superpower. They have elite athleticism and the ability to compete as the strongest and fastest and most competitive team on the pitch in any matchup. Here's Florida State's assistant coach Aaron Bruner. Seminoles in the attack. How about the shot by EY? You don't see her taking too many shots, especially from distance. Only the second shot, I think, of the season for her. 
and yet she had a low screamer that was just a little bit off the mark. Never know who's going to be able to come through for the Seminoles and taking shots. Now in the 29th minute. So this is where Miami needs to have a few players on the outside, maybe charge up a little bit, you know. And when those backers get the ball, I think you just have to take a shot down diagonally, wherever a pocket of space is, and you see a player in green, just, just feed it into their area and let them go get it. Uh-oh, here's Shell. Deep into Florida State's half. Taylor Shell, dispossessed by the freshman. That's just clean D by Van Zanten. Now Huff. Alagoa, a little bit too heavy for the Portuguese international. The throw for Florida State. Aggressive tackle by Van Zanten. Get another substitution, looks like. Lily Farkas coming in for Taylor Huff. There's that versatility you see from Van Zanten. She's such an excellent 1v1 defender. Seen her come up into the attacking half. Has great dribbling ability. Very athletic up the wing. Of course, the hero last game, but and good to see her getting some playing time, rewarding the play that she had earlier in the season, subbing in for Claire Rain. And what she did in those first two games against Texas A&M and TCU has paid off, and she's been able to sub in off the bench, tra you know, trading time with Ron EY in there in that left wing spot. Ooh, poor ball from Vargas. Here comes Miami now. Shell couldn't corral it. So Miami wastes a chance. Again, you just have to, you have to flip that switch so quickly against Florida State or they will make you pay as well. When you get golden chances like that, into already in the attacking half, you've got to just switch your mindset from defense to offense. And of course, Miami's played so much defense in the majority of their games that they don't have maybe the consistency on offense that they'd like to have in terms of goal production and blinking up passes. They have got to find a way to switch that mentality if they want to have a shot at tying this game up. They still don't have a shot registered in this game. There's a look at Adriana Serna. Foul. Miami can now gather themselves. Maybe perhaps put a dangerous ball into the 18. I think this is what you're looking for if you're Miami. It's going to be tough via the run of play, right, to link passes against Florida State, barring a Knowles mistake. These are your chances right here. It'll be Reese Wheeler. Game-winning goal against Louisville as time expired for the freshman. Have yourself a first career goal, huh? Here she is, into the box. That is a pretty good ball. Nodded away, Dudley, how about it? One of the tallest players on the pitch. And number 11. You got to wonder with NIL now, the ability to sell your uniform. She's, she's already got opportunities. She's already got signs. Oh, it's a coming. Here in Tallahassee. It's coming. She keeps scoring. You'll definitely get them. I think, the, I think these fans, you know, understand this. This is certainly a star on the rise. You think about, you know, what Florida State lost last year with Nicewanger and Robbins. Lost. They get, you know, lost pain as well. You know, those are really good staples here for Florida State. Yep. But then you're thinking, you know, maybe, you know, down the line, you know, Beata Olsen's going to graduate. You're going to have Jody Brown, Odin Echeghini. But still, plenty of offensive firepower here for Florida State, well within the ranks that they can deploy for years to come. One of the most outstanding newcomers in the game, Dudley. Introducing herself with the goal to that bottom left corner. Just opens it up just enough to get Dajene to go to her left. And that's all she needed to open up that far post. Man. If you haven't heard about her, you will. You've been living under a rock. She has burst onto the scene. 
against Anson Dorrance's Carolina Tar Heels. Couple goals. Another one tonight. She's not done, I promise you that. Yeah, we, you know, obviously she's just a freshman too, and not just this, you know, Brian Petsky called her the silent killer also because, you know, she's, you know, she keeps quiet. You know, she still, you know, had to obviously adjust a little bit, find her way, settle in here at the early stages. Of course, the coming out party against USF last Sunday against North Carolina. But that's going to build confidence in her throughout the rest of her career if she keeps this up. Farkas with the touch. Oh, whistles wide. Deflected corner. I think Lily Farkas was looking for her first seminal goal. She's itching for it. She's been close this season. Solid defense by Miami. Right there in front to at least disrupt Florida State's flow a little bit. Get enough numbers back to deflect the shot by Farkas. It'll be EY. Right corner flag. Out swinging ball at the six. Pretty good headed. Glancing head. Is that going to be a goal kick? It is. Last touch by a player in golds might have been Flynn. Flynn on the back side. Scored a goal there in tournament play, in fact. ACC, I think it was the ACC semifinal against Wake Forest way back in the day when she was a freshman. I think they were trying to feed Dudley once again. It's hard to intentionally try to avoid 5-11. Yeah, she's special. It's the number of ways right in the toolbox that she has to beat you. With her feet in the air. Nice turn by Echigini. I worked out well. <laughs> Fell on that. Farkas having a hit. Dajane again. It was dipping under that crossbar. Wow, Mel Dajane told us coming in she knew she would have to be active tonight. She was right. And she has been up to the challenge. Farkas. A lot of space in front. Clear view of that goal. Dajane already leaning toward that left, so it was not the most difficult. Can't let. And yeah, forget, Farkas led Michigan in shots last year. And now Dajane opting to just punch it away. Foot race, Flynn, the former attacking midfielder, turned center back. Oh, pace, nice. Turning, Farkas, active second half for the Michigan transfer. And now EY had an ocean, tried to play it around. Felton could not win. That battle 1v1. Well done by Florida State to win it back, though. It's a good shift by Wheeler to try and work her way up the pitch, but too many numbers back for the Seminoles. Pace, Nesbeth, lost her focus for a second. Head up before the ball, better feet. Knowles won it back. Nesbeth. Crunching tackle, foul, whistle. And Emma Tucker coming in with the foul here against Nesbeth. Didn't really exactly make a play on the ball, so fairly easy call. You ask around, Trevor, who is the engine of this Florida State team, right? Who's the heartbeat? And I think a lot of players, a lot of people will tell you it's no other than Leilani Nesbeth. Hard to argue. She, she waited her turn, right? She was once the outstanding freshman learning from Jalen Howell, from Clara Robbins. Now she's the vocal point of that midfield. Arguably the straw that stirs that drink. Dudley, this is nasty. Turning onto her left. So oh, intended for Huff. Excuse me, for Olsen, number nine. I think that's a player, by the way, they want to get going is you just get a look at Dudley. The would love to see Beata Olsen continue to find ways to heat up and add a second piece. They went with the 4-4-2 tonight instead of the 4-3-3. That was to allow Dudley to be a little bit closer, more central towards net with Beata Olsen. And you see it on the result of her goal. She gets to go downhill more, a little more center of the pitch. And she's able to take the angles that she does, the creativity that she provides. 12th corner kick. EY, low line driving ball. Popped into the air. Knuckler. Falling at the feet of Echigini, couldn't quite get a clean look. Out of the box, EY again. 
Decision time, takes it end line. Now the cross, glancing header. Edgigini, foul, punch back. How did that stay out again? Wow, there was a hole in the wall, but Miami dug the dirt over it just in the nick of time. Tony Echeguini has been within five yards twice tonight of a goal. Just piled that dirt in that one little gap there. Oh, last touch, it'll be a 13th quarter coming for Florida State. They want a second. This is really, you know, a, maybe a unsung part of the game where Florida State's really, I think, started to wear Miami down a little bit. See all this traffic in front. Tucker with a save, I think, off her shoulder. Looked like Olsen tried to come there to just put a touch on it. Looked like a couple of cleats diving. Miami players denied Olsen. Dudley rising high. Hands wanted a foul, not given. Now Miami. Here's a chance. Tucker poked away. Farkas. He's got to turn on the NOS if you're Tucker as fast as you can because the Seminoles will track you down. Nesbeth looking for the through ball. echeguini has been close a couple times tonight, dispossessed. McCartney, wow. Great 1v1 defending by the freshman. Yeah, she's got great awareness too. Very nice blocker for Miami there in the center part of that back line. Sarah Barnes said she has been unbelievable under pressure this season. She's a freshman herself. Cleared away by EY, out of danger. Throw in for the Canes. A couple minutes left for Miami to make one final push. Just to finish the point about just how many corners Florida State's had, that's where, the, that's where they've really started to wear Miami down, I think, with how much time they spent deep pressuring them around the box. That's what you kind of have to do, and I know Florida State only has the one goal, but it just drains their energy so much when you have to have them in those pressure situations on their heels. And remember, it takes them in order to get back to on the attack. You know, you have to travel that much further down the pitch if they want to make something happen. Lauren Meeks jogs back, junior from Fairfax Station, Virginia. Led the team in goals last season. And as Tuska Mahmoud pour back in as well. 74 active minutes against the Ville on Sunday. Big assist in the 2 1 win over Syracuse for Miami. That was their first ACC opening victory since 2011. It had been 12 years. Again, the progress that Coach Barnes has made is undeniable. They are battling through injuries, eight of them, six for the season, two more just for this one, including Maura Flynn, who is the sister of Lauren Flynn on Florida State. For this effort by Huff. Dudley, cross. <laughs> Olsen tried for a Golasso, <laughs> couldn't get it. Well, that would have been a beautiful volley if she was able to connect on that. She has had a penchant for the spectacular throughout her career. Well, you talked earlier about wanting to get her going. Once upon a time here at Florida State, her first season, she's put up 14 goals en route to a national championship. You consider, you know, Beata Olsen not the leading scorer for Florida State right now. Lily Farkas led Michigan in shots last year, ha doesn't have a goal yet. They may not have a deep bench, but that's still depth considering who hasn't exactly clicked yet and found results. Touch, middle of the 18, back to Huff. Another service, this time with the right foot, Dajane though, easy play for the Wiley keeper. Fifth in program history with those 227 saves coming in. You can add eight more to the tally. She now needs 12 to move into fourth all time in school history. Dudley had one from that spot, wants another! Rinse and repeat! Jordan Dudley has once again turned this seminal crowd to life and has killed Miami's chances.
If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Charge head of steam to her right and far post. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, not much Dajane can do. You're doing what you're supposed to do with how far wide Dudley is. She's guarding that near post, but unbelievable angle and shot trajectory by Dudley. And that is her third brace of the season. Already led all true freshmen in multi-goal games. There's a third for you. Now at the moment, and Shapansky from Pitt lit, led the conference in goals. Dudley came in third. These two would tire at the top. Obviously, there's games to be played this weekend for Pitt. Shapansky could take that back, but she has separated herself from the pack now. She's overtaken, by the way, Oni Echigini for the team lead in goals. Ah! You see it about this time of year, too, Trevor. The freshmen who start to separate themselves from the pack, when the game slows down, they all have quality, right? That's why they're D1 athletes. It's about finding comfort within your position, within the group, within the roles that you're being asked. And Jordan Dudley is flourishing. There's no denying it. I mean, and this is, again, the shift from the 4-4-2 is helping her here. Because this is more of her natural position, straighter, down the line, more direct, and yet she can still shoot from wide. I mean, Salas is there, obviously, marking her in front. Deja vu, wasn't it? it it's almost the exact, just a little more downhill on the first, just a little bit more from the midfield, obviously, running with a head more steam. But it's still it basically the exact same angle and sequence toward the end for the finish. It's almost like you could have put a cone there, right? And on the training ground, she will turn that corner and be able to finish clinically every single time. Noel's looking for a third. They're looking for the kill shot. Whew. Hard shot there for Huff, blocked. McCartney's gonna need some ice after that. Dangerous on her left, right towards the center of that frame. Dajene again. She continues to rack up the saves, nine in this game. Final minute, common. Well, obviously, admirable effort for Dajene. I mean, there's not really much else she can do. Just those two goals by Dudley are just I mean, there's really, it needs, you need, a, you know, a spectacular effort, time it up, maybe a second, like a split second more to maybe get a hand on it. But those are some hard shots by Dudley, as low as they are. That's the other thing about it. You know, Dajene is at 6'1". You have to get those, tall, those long arms and that tall body to get down fast. And with how hard of a shot Dudley shoots and provides off that right foot, it is really hard to stop. Well, I don't, care, I don't, care, how, I don't yeah. care how athletic you are, how tall you are, it is almost impossible from that angle. Now that's a Florida State team that's got win number eight in the books. Final few seconds, they'll look for a third. Olsen tried for the fireworks as the buzzer sounds. Final whistle, Jordan Dudley, the superstar. Freshman sensation, two goals. That's all Florida State needed. 2-0 over Miami.